From easiest to hardest, this is how the Sun Devils 2024 schedule shakes out. You are Locked On Sun Devils, your daily podcast on the Arizona State Sun Devils. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back to the Locked On Sun Devils podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. My name is Richie Bradshaw, and I will be your guide for everything. Arizona State Sun Levels. Thanks as always for tuning in and making us your first listen of the day. And of course, a shout out to my everydayers who are here every day. Wherever you're getting your podcast, hit like, subscribe, turn on notifications so you get an update whenever we post new content. You can stay in touch with that content by following me on Twitter. You can find me at Richie Brads36 and the podcast as well at LO underscore Sun Devils. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more right now. New customers join today. And you'll get $200 in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to the podcast. Today, we are going to be discussing the schedule. Once again, we took a look at it yesterday. Just an overall reaction to the schedule. So if you missed that, go and check it out. Stay in touch. Because there's a lot to talk about with this schedule. And the biggest, most intriguing aspect here is how difficult this schedule is. And I mean, my God, are the Sun Devils in for a really, really, really rough season. And it'll be uh, it'll be really interesting to see how the Sun Devils are able to handle such a difficult schedule because it's not like they had an easy one last year, right? They, they played Oregon. They played Washington. They played USC. They played Arizona. They played Utah. They, they played all the really the, the best teams in the PAC 12 last year. And in your debut season in the big 12, you're going up against Oklahoma state, Kansas state, Kansas. You still have, to play Arizona, you still have to play Utah. Uh, your your out of conference schedule isn't exactly the easiest, so it's going to be it 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 it's a big test. It it is a very big test. And as somebody who has said that the Sun Devils should be able to go bowling this year, they're going to have to earn it, and they're going to have to play some of their best football. And Kenny Dillingham's got a tall task ahead of him for this 2024 season, but we're going to take a close look today and take a look at the 12 game schedule and go from easiest. And I'll put that in quotes, easiest to the most difficult. And this, this was a, I I had problems trying to decide games over other games. And there's going to be some external factors here as well that are going to affect the outcome. But enough of that. Let's go ahead and get into the meat and potatoes of this podcast. We'll go ahead and start with what I consider the easiest, again, quotes, easiest game here for the Sun Devils. And that's going to be visiting Texas State. Now, yesterday on the podcast, I said that I wasn't sure how I felt about this game for the reason that they were a quality team last year. And they were bringing in Jaden Delore to be their quarterback. Well, lo and behold, um, we had somebody let me know in the comments on YouTube that Jaden Delora is actually not at Texas State anymore. He is withdrawing after all the uh, sexual misconduct allegations continue to circle around him. Um, um, re- uh, requisites whim. My apologies if I did not pronounce your name correctly, but thank you for putting in my comments so that I am aware of that. But that instantly makes this game arguably the easiest game. And they're, they're losing a lot of pieces too. Uh, they lost their other starting quarterback. They are, they, they had some seniors across the team that are gone. That in theory should be your easiest game. But again, they beat Baylor last year. This is not a cakewalk game, especially on the road. I'm hoping that you should be able to get this win, especially with a team that's going through some turnover. This, to me, is your easiest game. 
Next up, I've got Wyoming. And the reason why I have Wyoming is because it's a home game. And similar to Texas State, they're going through the motions and they're losing some veteran players. And this is a team that, even though they won nine games last year, is, first of all, they're they're not a Power 5 program. They are going on the road to play Arizona State. This is one of those games where, in theory, you should be able to beat them up pretty good to kind of build up the morale for your team in week one of the season. Again, though, none of these games to me are cakewalks. None of these games look to be super duper easy. And that's what makes me a little nervous about all of this. But Wyoming, the second easiest game that I have on the schedule right now for the Sun Devils. Next up, I've got another home game against Central Florida. That might catch some people off guard. So let me explain. You are... Sub, or not supporting you are what's the word uh well you're, you're hosting i guess is the word i'm looking for you're hosting central florida a team that was six and seven last year a team that is looking at some changes although they did bring in kj jefferson to be their quarterback and jefferson of course was a longtime starter at arkansas a very successful quarterback a player that many believe could be playing on Sundays in the NFL in some kind of capacity. He is he is going to be able to continue making them competitive. But the reason I have them up on an edge here compared to some of the other games is because you get them at home. And Central Florida has looked beatable. I think that you might be able to catch them here. If for no other reason, then it's going to be coming late in the year. You play them in November. And at that point in the season, you're hoping that this team has been good enough to be able to support quality uh, home field advantages. And if you are able to create that for yourself, then yeah, you're going to find yourself in a lot more games than, than, than you wouldn't. So that's where I have Central Florida a little bit higher than some of the other games here is because you're going to get them at home. Next up, visiting Cincinnati. Cincinnati was a three-win team last year with Emory Jones at quarterback. Emory Jones is no longer there. He's out of eligibility. They They are a team that has really fallen off after being a playoff team a couple of seasons ago. I don't know what their recruiting looks like, so maybe they've got a really good class coming in. But right now you look at what Cincinnati has, what they're trying to overcome in terms of losses, and Arizona State should be able to get the win. The reason why I have this a little bit higher than UCF is because you are on the road to play Cincinnati. And that always plays a factor when you're on the road to play these games compared to when you're at home. And playing in in, uh, October, it's going to be a little bit cooler up in Cincinnati, Ohio. This is going to be a big test for the Sun Devils. This is going to be one of your one of your first cold weather games that you have played in uh, in Big 12 play. Like obviously, you've played Utah in Salt Lake City, and with them being in the Big 12, you've had a little bit of a taste. But you're now going a lot closer to the East Coast than you are the Midwest Central part of the United States. This is a big test for the team, even though Cincinnati is not the best team in the world, it's still a really good test for you. One more game I want to talk about, and the reason why I kind of have these bunched up in like three different sections is because I go from what I feel is most confident about winning games to could be toss-ups and then to massive, massive challenges for the team. So the last game that I feel good about you having a swingers chance in is going to be home against Mississippi State. Mississippi State is another team that's going to be really trying to figure themselves out. They did not go bowling last year as a 5-7 and seven team. They just lost Will Rogers, and that that's about as tough as it's going to get, man. You lose your starting quarterback. You are a team that's, that's just not performing up to the expectations right now. And being in the SEC, it's going to be difficult for them 
to be able to rebound compared to some of the other programs because you're trying to out recruit guys. And I mean, in state, they're going up against Ole Miss. Like you're already behind the behind the eight ball when it comes to that. And they're having to deal with a whole new culture change with everything that has gone on from uh, the unfortunate passing of Mike Leach and now everything that is going on with the team. So I think that you could find yourself a really good SEC win. And if you get that, I don't care that it's Mississippi State. Like, that is still more often than not a quality team. And if they are not able to build off of what was a disappointing season last year, then Arizona State might be able to catch them early in the year. You get them the second week of the season. You get them at home. This feels like it could be a a really good opportunity for the Sun Devils to get what you would consider a quality win to start the year. That's my first group of games of the most confident slash comfortable that we could get the win. Next up, I've got three more games we're going to be taking a look at that I feel are going to be closer to toss-ups or at a minimum, just really competitive football games. We'll get to those in just a second. This is the Lockdown Sun Devils podcast, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. If you're like me, Super Bowl Sunday is all about scoring the best seat on the couch, grabbing your favorite football snacks, and placing some super bets. And a happy Super Bowl to all those who celebrate because of our friends at FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Look, I know you're trying to watch the big game. You're trying to get yourself that buffalo chicken dip, and you're trying to get some really good bets in so that you can end the season with a W or two or three If you're taking a look at those prop bets, which I know I'll be taking a look at, but not only can you win Super Bowl 58 off of a straight bet, but you can also have bets for which player scores a touchdown, how the points will be scored, how many points are going to be scored, and so many more options. And for new customers, if you join today, you'll get $200 in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more wins. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to sign up. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on make every moment more with FanDuel an official sportsbook partner of the NFL appreciate you guys for tuning in as always to the locked on Sun Devils podcast wherever you're getting your podcast hit like subscribe turn on notifications so you get an update whenever we post new content of course you can check out the locked on sports today 24 7 streaming channel on YouTube so you can get caught up with everything that's going on in sports from professional to college from football, basketball, baseball, hockey. Stay in touch with the Ravens getting their new defensive coordinator, uh, Zach Orr, the Washington Commanders hiring Dan Quinn to be their head coach. Get caught up. Find something to put on while you're eating your dinner tonight. Back into our conversation now, taking a look at the three games that I feel are going to be closer to toss-ups now for Arizona State. We'll go ahead and start with BYU. And the reason why I have BYU here is they're coming off a not so great season. They went five and seven last year. They are now going to be dealing with a new quarterback situation as Keaton Slovis is officially out of eligibility. And either way, he was not very good for them last year. 12 touchdowns and six picks. They did a lot of their a lot of their work, like I, I guess through the crown, but they're their leading rusher only had 518 yards. Like this is not the best BYU team that we've seen, but we also know that BYU has had some very competitive games with Arizona state. So I have to think that you are potentially going to be running into a team that views this as a rivalry game. And quite frankly, ASU should view this as a potential rivalry game. Now that you're in the same conference as each other with a little bit of history, you you might be establishing yourself a new rivalry. So BYU is really interesting to me. And the reason why I have it as one of your more winnable games is because it's in Tempe. With it being a home game, I like your advantage a little bit more, which is also what leads me into my next game. And this this is going to be so dependent on the quarterback. And that's Kansas. You get Kansas at home. 
if, and, and this is such a big if, their quarterback is not good to go, I think this becomes a much more winnable game. The quarterback I am referencing is Jalen Daniels. Jalen Daniels is a beast when he is healthy. He can throw it. He can run it. He scores touchdowns. The problem is he's always banged up. Last year, missed a lot of time. The year before, missed some significant time. And thankfully for them, they had Jason Bean to be able to come in and be a good quarterback for them. But Jason Bean's out of eligibility. So now, what does their quarterback room look like? Obviously, Jalen is the guy until further notice. And again, he's a stud. He's a beast. He is more than capable of leading the Jayhawks to a lot of wins. But if he's not healthy and you don't have a big time quarterback behind him anymore, what happens? What happens to the Jayhawks team once he goes down? If Jalen Daniels is not good to go in this game, there is a chance this is a much higher win probability situation for the Sun Devils. It would not surprise me if Jalen Daniels goes down, if this suddenly becomes a game that Arizona State is more than capable of taking advantage of it. And again, you're home. That's that's such a factor for you. You get them early in the season after your first bye week. So you get them October 5th. This is your first home game in Big 12 play. There is also a really nice opportunity here for you to establish a a home win in the in the new conference. And that does a lot for the morale. It does a lot for your your like the perception, I guess is what I'm trying to say, of teams that look at you. This game will be easier if Jalen Daniels is not playing. If he is playing, this game is significantly more difficult. Right now, I kind of have it right in the middle of the road because I, I I don't know, and none of us do know. So I think right now, it's fair to put it middle of the road, see what happens from there. Those are the easier slash more difficult home games. One more game I want to talk about, kind of in the middle of the pack for me, is Texas Tech. I don't know what to do with Texas Tech because they are typically a high-flying offense and they're going through some changes just like any other team is. The reason why I have it a little bit more difficult than the others is because you're going to Lubbock. This is also your first game of Big 12 play. This is your debut. You want to start your debut with a win, but so does everyone. Utah wants to start with a win, Colorado, Arizona, everyone wants to start with a win. So Arizona State is not special in that regard. Texas Tech has been in the Big 12 for a minute. Texas Tech knows what it takes to play Big 12 football. And Arizona State has played them a couple of times. They've played very different teams, though. It, it's been a while since we played them. Last time we played them was Patrick Mahomes versus Kalen Balazs. That should tell you what you need to know. But the reason why I have it a little bit higher, again, is this is a road game. And with it being a road game, that adds a whole new element to the difficulty factor here. So I do have it a little bit more difficult compared to the other games. But I'll tell you right now, there is a whole other step that we're going to take a look at in just a second. Because the final four games that we're going to talk about ASU is going to need to play A-plus football, some S-tier football, because if they don't, they're going to get mollywopped in these four games. We're going to talk about them in just a second. It's the Locked On Sunnivals podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Again, I appreciate you guys for tuning in, as always, and making us your first listen of the day. And, of course, a shout-out to my everydayers who are here every day. Wherever you're getting your podcast, hit like, subscribe, turn on those notifications, and check out the Locked On Sports Today 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube and get caught up on all the biggest news in college, in pros, 
every league. Stay up to date. It's the coolest thing ever. Gives you something to watch while you're trying to figure out what you're going to put on YouTube while you're eating your dinner tonight. The final four games here. Easily the most difficult. And you'll notice there's only one home game here. And that home game is not going to be easy. We'll go ahead and start with my number four most difficult game, which is going to be Oklahoma State. The reason why I give Arizona State a little bit of an edge compared to the only home game they have here is because you have played Oklahoma State tough the last couple of times you have seen them. And Oklahoma State is going through some changes at quarterback. Gundy's kid is gone. Alex Bowman is out of eligibility. But they have the reigning Doak Walker Award winner in Ollie Gordon, who might be, even beyond the award, he might be the best running back in the country. And there's some good running backs in in uh, in all of college football right now. But Ollie Gordon is a whole other beast. And Arizona State was lucky to not see him at his full potential last year because when they played the Cowboys in week two, Mike Gundy did not realize that when you give Ollie Gordon the football, you win football games. The difference now is he does know that. And you're you're going to be home in Stillwater. How does this shake out for you? I don't know. What I do know is in this last year of games, these are easily the most difficult games that you're going to be playing. I do not feel super confident that you can go to Stillwater and get a win, especially because the Cowboys are just a great team. And as long as Ollie Gordon is there, they're going to win a lot of football games. They make me nervous. They are number four for me. Number three is the only home game on this list. That is Utah. Utah is further ahead of Oklahoma State because they're Utah. You're talking about a team that repeated as Pac-12 champions. They are coming off a down year in terms of Utah standards, so they're going to be pissed off. And they're also getting back two key players in Cameron Rising, who is going to play... 40 years of college football at this point, and Brant Keithy, the tight end slash H-back, whatever, who's also going to be playing 40 years alongside Cameron Rising. But those two alone should strike fear into the hearts of opposing teams. And I know they missed all of last season, but they're going to be 100% good to go. You also are going up against Kyle Whittingham, and Kyle Whittingham coached Utah teams are about as good as it gets. So as long as he is still coaching and as long as he is at the forefront of everything that Utah is going to be doing in terms of recruiting, in terms of coaching, in terms of culture building, they're going to be a tough team to play. I don't care if this game is on the moon. This is going to be a very difficult game. And it is going to be right in the middle of the year. October 11th, I believe that is your sixth game, actually. So it's it's a good test. There is a chance that you could have a winning record at this point in time. There is a chance that you could be right right around 500, like a 3-2 and two or a 2-3 and three team. This will be a big opportunity to kind of assert yourself. And this is a team you're, you're intimately familiar with if with all the games that you have played against them in the Pac-12 and the Pac-12 South formerly when they had divisions. Like, you are very familiar with Kyle Whittingham coach teams. But the problem is he's also familiar with Arizona State. And Arizona State has gone through a lot of changes. And they just got their butt kicked last year in Salt Lake City. This is anything but an easy game. And I am... Uh, I, I'm just not confident ever playing Utah. They just play a whole different style of football compared to everybody else. They make me nervous, but not as nervous as these final two games, both road games. My number two might shock you. 
But with that being said, this is closer to a 1A, 1B than it is a firm number one, number two. The second game here that, again, I'd listen to either way is Arizona. And the reason why I have Arizona number two instead of number one is this is your in-state rival. This is the team that you hate more than anybody else. This is the team that anything can happen when you play them. You can win 70 to 7. You can get your butt kicked in Tempe. It doesn't matter. Anything happens in this game. But with that being said, this is a very talented U of A team. And sure, they're losing some important pieces. Jonah Coleman transferred. Jacob Cowing is going to the NFL. I get it. But Noah Fafita is coming back at quarterback and T-Mac is coming back at wide receiver. And as long as those two are there, you're going to be in trouble. And T-Mac has had consecutive good games against Arizona. As a freshman, when he was the number three receiver, and last year he went bonkers. Fafita absolutely carved up the Sun Devils last year. These two are dangerous. U of A's defense is sneaky good, too. When I say sneaky good, that's not disrespectful. That's me saying that not a lot of people are going to talk about them, and they're better than you think. That is a team that is scary to play. But of course, as I have said many times in this podcast, I am never taking ASU to lose that game. We could be 0-11 going into it, and they can be 11-0. I'm taking ASU every single time. But I can also recognize that this is a tough game, especially because you're going to Tucson. And the, it, it's, it's, a, it's an environment, man. They are rowdy. And during the... During the Territorial Cup games, it's it's a whole other atmosphere for them. So, yeah, number two for me, I could, I could understand you putting it number one, but the number one game that I have here is Kansas State. And the biggest reason why I have Kansas State ahead of Arizona, I understand Will Rogers is gone. Or not Will Rogers. Um, God, who is their quarterback? I can't remember off the top of my head. I'll have to look it up. But I understand that they are going through some changes on offense. And their quarterback is not uh, Will Howard. There it is. Will Howard is not coming back. But they still have a lot of very talented kids, including DJ Giddens, who is their running back. He ran for 1,200 yards, 10 touchdowns, 5.5 yards per carry last year. In fact. They scored 62 offensive touchdowns, 32 on the ground, 30 through the air. They've also got a young quarterback coming back in Avery Johnson. He was a freshman last year, five touchdowns, zero interceptions. They've got weapons. He also ran for almost 300 yards and seven touchdowns. This is behind Will Howard. They've got players. And you're going to Manhattan. You're going to Manhattan. In mid-November, it's going to be friggin' cold. I have been to Manhattan in mid-November. It's not fun for an Arizona kid. Those kids, though, are very accustomed to it. They know Midwest football. They know Midwest we weather. It, it It's not anything they're not prepared to handle. Arizona State, I, I don't know the last time they played a snow game. Because there's really only two options for Pac-12 play, and that's Colorado and Utah, and they typically don't play them in mid-November. This is a whole other atmosphere, and this is a huge test for Arizona State against a dynamic offense. You are going to have to play either dominant defense or you're going to have to be able to keep up in a shootout on the road in a freezing environment. That's why I got them number one. But again, that's probably closer to a 1A, 1B with U of A. It just is. It's a tough schedule. That's how I rank the 12 games. How do you guys rank the 12 games? Let me know in the comments. You can hit me up on Twitter. You can find me at RichieBrads36, the podcast as well, at LO underscore Sun Devils. But wherever you're getting your podcast, hit like, subscribe. 
turn on notifications to get an update whenever we post new content. I appreciate you guys for tuning in. As always, tonight is going to be some ASU basketball, which means when we come back on Sunday, we're going to be recapping this game and we're going to be recapping Saturday's game as well. So if you're in the hoops, make sure that you're tuned in. We're going to continue to be talking ASU football and any other breaking news that goes on with the program. So again, like, subscribe, turn on notifications. I'll see you guys next time. And until then, you keep it locked right here on Locked on Sun